welcome back to another vlog on the golf. Ah, oh, that's how I have to say it. When people say, oh, what car you got? I say, oh, I got golf. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, I've got a Hyundai behind me. It looks like he wants to go. But I'm, I've set out to try and do a, uh, a video on economy. So I've been driving very carefully since I left my house. Thing is, today it's a wet and gray day. So I thought, let's talk economy. Because that's a bit of a gray kind of subject, and it? It's a little bit like, oh, miles per gallon. It's that sort of realization that you still have got to run a, run a car and pay for it as petrol or diesel or whatever. So yeah, it's a little bit of a, ah, miles per gallon. Now, if you're anything like me, when I was looking at cars on Auto Trader a lot, I would always set myself a budget. <laughs> And I'd find, inevitably, I'd always creep over that. I don't know how that happens, but you do. Uh, and then I would look at two things. Performance, first of all. I would go to the stats and figures, and I would look at 0 to 60 times, and I would look at brake horsepower, top speed. Uh, top speed, I'm not that interested in, but uh, 0 to 60. And then I would go to economy. And I would look at miles per gallon. And as I said, I looked a lot at the Subaru Impressors, and I quite like the, um, I don't know what year it changed, I think it was about 2006 um, onwards until the new one. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of the new ones. I'm a little bit sort of retro with my, with my Subaru connotation. But anyway, I was looking at them loads, and it was like combined uh, miles per gallon of like, uh, I can't remember what it was, 25, something like that, and then, around town was 18 and stuff like that. So I'd always look at the miles per gallon and as I said before, the car I had before was a Mondeo ST and that was a diesel. And that pretty much all the time was putting out about 45 miles per gallon. So when I got into the Golf, ah, oh, I was a little bit surprised at the fuel economy. Um, you, you can, if you drive this car hard, you can watch the fuel gauge go round. And that is a little bit of a, uh, well it's a bit of a, a weird feeling, having come out of a diesel. So I would say, right, so since starting this morning, I've been driving five minutes, I've been getting about 28.6 miles per gallon. Long term, this car has been doing about 33. So this car has been putting out 33 miles a gallon. You can, if you drive really, really carefully, you can do like silly stuff, like 40 plus. I've seen it on the on the on the average um, miles per gallon reading screen. But that is literally me in a 40 or 50 mile an hour limit in sixth gear, coasting along, like desperately trying to sip fuel. Um, so it is achievable. It is. But the thing is, I didn't buy this car to sip fuel. Let's put this in race mode. Because the thing is, the economy, well, <laughs> it's good and all, but this Hyundai is still behind me. Uh, yeah. Not anymore. See you, see you later, Hundy. See you later, Minger. <laughs> I don't mean that, not a Minger at all. But I'm not a big fan of Hindis. Hundies! It's a Hundy. Uh, so the, one of the things I think is quite key here is that if you go for this car and you're unrealistic about the miles per gallon, you will get about 32, 33 all the time. And, and I've got to say, that is livable. That really is, because you are dealing with a car here that is all-wheel drive, and it is 300 brake horsepower. And it will not be driven slowly. There's moments like that where you come off a junction and you just want to go. On a wet day like today, you think to yourself, I'm feeling a bit miserable. Uh, and actually, I want to cheer myself up. So you do, you put your foot down, and that's just the way it is. That Hyundai still hasn't caught up, and I've slowed right down. 
He was right on my bumper. You know when people are so close to your bumper you can actually see their face? <laughs> anyway, he's gone now. Um, so what else can I tell you? Uh, basically, I, I've been surprised. I have been surprised not how much fuel this uses because I think it's quite a frugal car when you, when you look at the engine and the performance you're getting. I mean, this 0 16 5 and a little bit seconds, that's, that's pretty ballistic. And I love the manual because look, uh, fourth gear, 3,000 revs. Oh yes. <laughs> that, that is just a lot of fun. And I know the DSG boxes are fun with the launch control. I've got to be honest, I haven't been able to launch this car at all. Like that's something I'm having issues with, but we're talking MPGs and, and the drivability. So I, I've, I personally think uh, if I had a, if I had another go, I would I would maybe consider the DSG, okay? Because if you are commuting, and you anyway, I'm just going to shut up for a minute and drive. Anyway, you can see for yourself how this thing handles. It handles like it's on rails. I was talking DSG, I was talking manual. You know what? I'm gonna stick with a manual, A, because, well, that's what this car's got and I can't change it. But B, I actually really enjoy the manual. I feel like I can slam this thing down gears. I know you can do it on the paddles if you're purist with the DSGs. I love you anyway, but for me, it's a manual gearbox. That's what I've got and I actually really enjoy it. Um, the other thing I'm going to say about diesels. Now I see a lot of Golf Mark 7s, the GTDs. If you've got one, I've not got any problem with you. I'm making a bit of a generalised statement here, but I often see them, often, not all the time, I often see them being driven really, really hard because they are a fast diesel. I mean, interior wise, I think they're pretty much identical to this. This has got obviously the R seats, um, I don't know what else this has probably got that the uh, that the GTDs haven't got. I've never been in one, but I imagine it hasn't got the same steering wheel or the R wheel or the whatever. I don't really care. But the point I'm trying to make is I've seen a lot recently of GTDs being driven hard, <laughs> really hard. And, and when you go by in the Golf R, and it happened twice, twice this morning on the way here, you get this kind of look, now this is a 30, I mean, I've got 230. You, you get this look from the GTD owner, and it's this sort of look. Now I take that look as, yeah, I went for the GTD, and yeah, I'm getting 60 miles to the gallon or 100 miles to the gallon, I don't know what you get with them. But you get a look that says, oh, yeah, that's, Oh, that's the R. Now, I could be imagining that. Maybe you're a GTD owner listening and watching this and thinking, oh, I don't do that. And then I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about the other ones I've seen. But I've seen it, and I've seen that look, and I probably, if I'm totally honest, if I went for the GTD, which I looked at loads, and it's a comfortable ride, it's got this set up, I would be driving my GTD, and I would look, and if a Golf R went by, I would look and go, oh, yeah. Oh, perhaps I should have gone for the Golf R. Because that's just the way it is. This thing is fast, and I know the GTDs are fast, but not as fast as this, not as much fun as this. And I would argue that with this being four wheel drive, with the extra brake horsepower, okay, it's not got the same, it's not got a, a standout interior really, that is probably gonna be the selling point for you on the GTD or the R. But, the setup of this, like I say, 300 brake, with the four wheel drive, it is uh, it's just ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> and it, again, it is that whole real world usable. So if you're a GTD owner out there, I love your choice, and, I'm, I'm, and I mean that, I do, because actually, 
that you're probably getting double the miles per gallon I'm getting, but, but, and this is the, this is a big but. The, I, I think if you're driven only by miles per gallon when you're looking at a car, you're gonna be disappointed. I think, I really do think that. Because you're not gonna be able to get that in third gear, wait till this corner moves out. Oh, flipping heck. I mean that, that's foot, foot down hard there, around that corner. <sighs> <laughs> Let's let the old Yaris go ahead a little bit because there's some nice corners here and I don't want to be slowed down by a Yaris. No offence, I do like the Toyota Yaris sound car. I think Toyotas are reasonable, reliable, look good. Oh no, do you know what I've just seen? Hyundai man has just come over the brow of the hill behind me, lights on full, giving it, oh, I'm going to catch you. <laughs> I know that's not actually what he's thinking, he's probably just doing his way to work. But I like to create these little scenarios. Right. Car. Yeah, you're right, we do need to brake. That's the other thing about this car. The brakes on this car are good. I'm gonna just throw that out there. We can talk about that. I'll do, well I don't have to do a review on the brakes because they're just there, aren't they? But they are, powerful brakes they really are like you stamp on them and you know you're going to stop which is which is quite helpful anyway you can see the car has been in race mode most of the journey to work it is now in eco mode thank you for watching i am nathan Zou, and this has been another golf r vlog see you later